I'm doing all right, man. How about yourself? I'm doing excellent. I know why you're in Berlin, and I couldn't be more fucking excited. <laughs> there we go. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect any different of you, man. Yeah, I know you. I know you stay on top of it. Super excited. Um, I want to start with. Listen, first of all, great work in Chicago Seven movie is fantastic. Um, I just want to start with the other thing is uh, congrats on being part of the best series of 2019, also known as Watchmen. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. That that means everything. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable series. Um, Jumping into why I get to talk to you today. Yeah. um, You've obviously done, you've worked on a lot of different things, but did you, as an actor, did you put even more pressure on yourself for Chicago 7 because it was Aaron Sorkin, it was Bobby, and it was this story? This was probably... There, there was no pressure. Everything about this was a was was a privilege. This was probably the most. This was one one of the. I want to use the right word, the easiest jobs to get up and go to and to prepare for. You know, since I since I've graduated, just because it it it, it, it this this job as an actor it rewards you immediately, almost like the gratification that you get from theater. Because I got to, I get to, I got to have to turn those pages to get into the script. I have to listen to the dialect, the turn back, and I'm learning about history. So I'm being rewarded at every turn. And then I go and I sit down. And even on the days when I'm not talking, I'm rewarded because I'm in the presence of uh, of, of of great, really, really great actors. So this was rewarding from from you know from top to bottom, and there was very little uh, that was you know a, a pres- that was a pressure situation. In fact, it was the opposite. I, it was one of those iron sharpen, sharpens iron type of situations on this project, for sure. I would imagine filming those court scenes with all those people um, yeah. had to have been just an amazing experience. And even if maybe you're not on camera, you're like, F it, I'm not staying in my trailer, I'm on set. No, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go watch Aaron work, Mark Rylance work. I mean, I think just about all of my scenes with the exception of one were opposite Mark Rylance. So I had a very good working relationship with him uh, 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 even uh, Kelvin, you know, Kelvin Harris, uh, you know, was sitting right behind me, and you know, we got to you know develop a really good relationship. It was a master's class every single day, um, and Aaron really, really, really teed it up, you know, with those words in the script, and even everything down to the set, set decoration and costume left very little to the imagination, or left very little uh, uh, necessary, you know, uh, for for the actors. We had everything that we needed. The film takes place in 1968. Um, as you watch it, you can't help but be angry at the way Bobby was treated by that judge. It is mm-hmm. outrageous that that was able to, to happen, um, mm-hmm. the, the, the way he was treated. Uh, can you sort of talk about the way he was treated in this, like, by this judge and maybe what are the things you were surprised to learn when researching? Yeah, well, you know, you look at the way that he was treated being, uh, being bound and gagged in, in, in a courtroom. That sounds like something out of a, that only belongs in a movie or or some or somewhere in a novel. But to know that that happened uh, as late as uh, 1969, I believe uh, that that's 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 infuriating. You know, you know, just just as you said, but it also shows the lack of uh, regard for uh, for black lives. You know, uh, during that time. You know, I think. Um, in a lot of ways, we have not moved past the possibility of moments like that, uh, um, and and so you know I also carried carried with myself a lot of responsibility to accurately tell those stories and to tell that story with a lot of dignity as well. This was a lesson in terms of what I learned. This movie was a lesson in dignity, a lesson in uh, humanity, and lesson lesson in carrying on uh, or leading the charge for your for your cause with dignity. And uh, and with absolute courage, uh, because it was it was tested at you know tested at every turn. The thing is that when you were making this, I don't think that you guys could have any idea of the timeliness of this film, especially mm-hmm. with what's going on now and what's mm-hmm. been going on. I mean, for many many years. Can you sort of talk about the timeliness of this film? Yeah, sure. You know, we did make this uh, knowing that it would be an election year, knowing that we that the movie would come out sometime around the election and. That was really the attitude that we was making this, you know, with is saying, hey, it's important to make your voices heard, to get out and vote, uh, you know, to make your voices heard through becoming involved in the political process. But this movie has taken on an identity uh, or, or uh, of its own, or, or I think that it will 
based on where we find ourselves in the world. You know, this is a this is the you know the the, the refrain that that repeats itself in the trailer. You know, the whole world is watching. Is now and is an absolute truth. You know, there's really all eyes on on the on us and in the U.S. The young people in the U.S. People from every for all generations. And uh, everyone is wondering how how are we going to respond to our, our to uh, you, you know to the current uh, oppressive uh, pressures that are being placed upon us. And what are we going to do? And so this movie, hopefully, is a call to action to let others uh, to to lead others to stand up to get uh, to get uncomfortable to create uh, to create a positive discomfort and to really demand uh, demand action and, and uh, change. I, I hope so. Um, before I run out of time with you. I definitely have to ask you about uh, Matrix because I'm a huge fan. Uh, I've heard through the grapevine that the script is fantastic. Uh, mm. I want to know what your reaction was reading it for the first time and meeting with Lana for the first time. Sure. My reaction to the script. Wow. People are really going to like this. You know, I said, you know, wow. You know, I like this. People are really going to like this. It's it's different and it's the same you know, at the same time. So it's a really, really very intelligent blend of what we want and what we don't know, what we may have, and what we may not know that we want. Um, my, my first uh, meeting with Lana uh, was, um, wasn't even really an audition. It was, it was just that it was a meeting. It was, a, you know, really uh, about getting to know me and getting to know uh, her and uh, uh, our, our histories and how I am as an actor. You know, Lana is, um, Lana was was interested in creating a family, you know, before she was interested interested in creating a cast, and so uh, I was very fortunate enough to to be welcome welcome into in, into that family, you know, uh, and, and to be over here in Berlin with that team making something really special is 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 a uh, it's definitely uh, something that I'm proud to, you know, proud to say I'm a part of. Cannot f and wait. Um, yeah, listen, yeah, 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 man. Congrats on everything. Um, have a great yeah. shoot. Uh, stay safe. All right, appreciate you. Take care.